Good afternoon. I am inspired to be here with such a passionate team so committed to expanding educational opportunity in Japan. I, I, I think we'll look back on this moment, by the way, as a historic moment that saw the launch of a significant social movement in your country. I thought I would begin by sharing a bit about my story, how I came to this and what I've learned along the way as a way of sharing why I believe so strongly that the leaders in your generation should apply to and join Teach for Japan. I first came to this when I was in your seats 22 years ago. I was a student at Princeton University and I was very, very focused on the issue of educational inequity. In our nation, about a fifth of the children in the country are growing up in poverty. And that background predicts their educational outcomes and, and life outcomes. And I thought that for a country that aspires to be a place of equal opportunity, we couldn't let that persist. I was part of what was called the me generation. Supposedly, we just wanted to go make a lot of money and, and work in investment banks. But I felt that the problem wasn't the generation, but rather the recruiters. And one day, just thought of this idea. You know, why aren't we being recruited as aggressively to commit two years to teach in our highest need communities as we were being recruited at the time to commit two years to work on Wall Street? I became obsessed with this idea. I thought it would be powerful in the short run because we would be channeling all this energy into classrooms in our most disadvantaged communities. And I thought it would be powerful in the long run to influence the futures of all of our future leaders whose first two years would be working in our, our most underprivileged communities instead of working on Wall Street. I thought that would shape their consciousness, their priorities, and their career paths. This was an idea whose time had come. It was clearly meant to happen. I proposed it in my undergraduate senior thesis. Um, and, and, and sent this thesis out to business leaders and secured a seed grant. Um, and to make a very long story short, one year after I graduated from college, I was looking out on an auditorium full of the first 500 Teach for America Corps members who were embarking on their training and their two-year teaching commitment. Few would have predicted the impact that would emerge from this idea. 20 years ago, the prevailing notion in the United States was that your family background, your income level, determined your educational backgrounds. Today, Teach for America is fueling a rapidly growing movement to change this. And now, thanks to social entrepreneurs and leaders in the younger generation like yourselves all around the world, this is becoming a global movement. This year in the United States, 50,000 graduating seniors and recent college graduates competed to enter Teach for America, including 15% of the graduates at my alma mater, Princeton University, and thousands and thousands of others of our most highly sought after recent graduates. Today, more than 9,000 teachers are in the midst of their two-year commitments in 43 urban and rural regions across the country. And a growing body of rigorous research shows that they have a positive impact on their students' achievement, even as compared to veteran teachers in their schools. And 24,000 Teach for America alumni are a force for change across our country. As I had originally envisioned, their teaching experience proved to be foundational for a lifetime of educational leadership and advocacy. They are running some of our nation's fastest improving school districts. They're leading some of the most aggressive educational improvement efforts across whole states. They're affecting policy change as some of the nation's boldest political leaders and policy advocates. Whether they have remained in education or have moved into business or medicine or other parts of society, 
They are working together for fundamental societal and educational change. And now thousands of people are competing to join the growing number of programs that are part of the global Teach for All network in countries around the world, in China, Malaysia, and India, and now Japan, and in nearly every region of the world, um, thousands of capable, diverse, extraordinarily committed students are competing to channel their energy in this direction. In India, for example, more than 7,000 individuals applied to the program in Teach for India's fourth year. Hundreds of teachers are already working across three cities in India and their young alumni are already proving to be an influential force for change. So today, this is becoming a global movement that is inspiring the most promising future leaders in countries around the world to commit themselves to improve educational opportunity for today's students and over time to become part of a national network and a global network of leaders who will continue to work together from positions inside of education and outside of it for fundamental change. Around the world, most people see Japan as a country that prioritizes education and where students study hard and do well. But what Matsuda-san and his team understood and what many of you know is that even here in Japan, some students don't fulfill their true potential, in part because their families can't afford the supplementary education that other families can. It is so exciting to see the launch of Teach for Japan to help change this. I thought I would briefly share the three biggest lessons of our work in the United States and globally as a way of sharing why I believe so strongly that you can make a huge difference here in Japan. The first lesson is that educational inequity, a problem that most people believe is intractable, unchangeable, this problem is a solvable problem. We see evidence of this in classrooms across the country, now in hundreds of whole schools across our country that have been launched by and are being led by so many Teach for America alumni. And now even in whole school systems, we see meaningful, measurable progress against in closing the achievement gap. So this is the first lesson because once we realize that we can solve this problem, then we realize that we have a moral imperative to solve it. The second lesson is that the key to change is leadership. When you see what is happening in classrooms where things are changing for kids, in whole schools that are putting children on a different trajectory, in school systems that are changing, always, always, always the answer is leadership. This is the second reason that, that makes us all so determined to see you all channel your energy in, in this direction because you can, be, uh, you can be the change. The third lesson is that the problem of educational inequity is universal in its nature, which means that the solutions are shareable. What I've learned through the experience of Teach for All in the last five years is that virtually every country at every stage of development has persistent gaps in educational opportunity. And, and the nature of the problem is so similar from place to place, which means that the solutions will be shareable. So we envision dozens and dozens, growing numbers of movements that inspire the most capable, committed leaders in all of these different countries to channel their energy against essentially very, very similar problems in diverse cultural contexts that inspire innovation um, and informing each other as part of a global network. So this is the power of Teach for All, to envision ever accelerating movements to expand educational opportunity and thus improve our global welfare. These are the reasons I hope so strongly that your generation will channel your energy towards Teach for Japan. 
because you can make a huge difference in the immediate term in the lives of children growing up today in your country. And at the same time, you'll strengthen your nation and in time, your innovations will improve our global welfare. We now know that we can reach the day when all children in this country and around the world have the opportunity to attain an excellent education. The only question is whether enough of this country's future leaders will step up and decide to lead us to that day. I hope that you will make the answer to that question, yes, thank you.